Thank you for coming. Um, I'm Jean-Yves Perrier. I'm uh, working for Mozilla for 12 years, but a lot of time as a volunteer and uh, eight years as, a, as an employee. I'm part of the developer outreach organization, uh, and my role for a very long time was to make documentation about CSS, about other things, and to make the release notes, uh, which basically meant going through 1,000 email a day for everything was happening inside bug mail to understand what the developer was doing. Uh, later, it's a bit uh, different nowadays. I'm working mostly on the tech speaker program and I'm uh, helping organizing events and other things like this, but I still like to know what is going on around uh, uh, the CSS, the HTML, and how the browser is working. So today I want to speak a little bit about something we don't speak much anymore, CSS, which is basic, one of the basic things that the web was doing and is still doing. So CSS is all about boxes. The goal and the main goal of CSS is to take boxes of different shapes, to change a little bit their shapes, to put rounded corner, changing the color, and to put them somewhere on your screen or on print and other devices. That's the idea of the layout. And in fact, the way we are doing this is changing, and we forget it, because we speak about JavaScript, we speak about WebAssembly, and how to make a nice and really fancy web application, but we forget that we still have to put boxes on the screen and to make them interact together. And the way we are doing this is a bit different in the second half of the second decade of the century, wow, uh, than it was in the 90s, or the end of the 90s when CSS was created. And the first thing that we have, that has changed lately is we have new way of describing where we put the boxes. So one of them is Flexbox. So Flexbox has been invented already a lot of years ago, but nowadays it starts to be, over the last three or four years, it's something that everybody is using and can use. It has been designed to do a set of boxes of different sizes and to tell them how to align them, uh, how to, what happens if you add an extra box, what happens if you don't have enough space, and how to go on the line, and so on. So this model is very useful when you design web application and special, especially menus. So this is the first thing that we have added, that has been added to CSS over maybe 10, 15 years that make the way we lay out boxes different. And in fact, even if we can do this for quite a few years, we were still missing quite a few tools to make this easy for the web developer. So uh, what exists nowadays, and I, I take the example here on uh, the dev tool of Firefox, is in fact when you look into the HTML or into the CSS, you have small hints that tell you, oh, this will be a flex box. And the way we want to look and debug your Flexbox is to clicking, and you want to see the Flexbox in your tool. And this is pretty new. This is in the last release of Firefox. You absolutely can see for each box is where it is. You can define the color of the box in the layout so that you can understand why your magnific, your beautiful layout on the paper is looking absolutely ugly on screen, and you can debug it. So that's one thing that was absolutely necessary, not only to have the flexible box model, but also to have way to see it uh, on screen. So if you are more interested about the flexible box layout, we have, sorry, all documentation on MDN. Uh, it has been re rewritten uh, lately, so it's really up to date with all the small changes. And also we have all information about the Flexbox inspector that has been added. The second thing that has changed over the last few years, and this one uh, has mostly appeared in 2017, so two years ago, is now to have a grid. So uh, everybody was saying at that time, two years ago, oh, we are back to the table world where everybody was using tables 
uh, in HTML to make their layout. Yes, on one side, because yes, having a table uh, layout is sometimes useful, and no, on the other side, because HTML is for semantic, and uh, now we can do tab table layout, but without the semantic inside the HTML of a table, because it's not a table, it's just a layout. So the table, the grid layout, in fact, lets you define grids, and you say different regions on the grid, and what happened, and what have to be put there. Coupled with responsive web design, you can have really fancy or really basics, in fact, in this case, layouts being done uh, very easily just by saying this span. Three columns, this one, three columns and two rows and so on. Or this one, we need as many rows as possible uh, to fit the content and so on. But when we change the screen size, it automatically attributes different elements of the grid. And here, exactly the same as a flexbox, and this was done in fact before, we need a way to see the grid. So from the HTML, we need to know that the main is a grid so that we can debug it, or from the code where we see the display grid, and we have a small element to click. And this is what we have to debug and to know again why our marvelous design on the paper is still looking very bad. So here, we see the grid, we see the numbers uh, in one direction. This is from a template, so there are non-named uh, lines. And on the other side, it goes uh, with negative in the other direction. And you can understand why something you believe will be here was, in fact, displaying in this part. So this is another tool that you needed to use uh, grids in an efficient way. So what happened to the floats? Because everybody was doing design with floats before. So all I learned about floats is useless now. All the small things to spend days to be sure that everything was pixel perfect is useless. No. In fact, we still can and we still need to use uh, floats, but this time for something where you need floats. So you still have sometimes text uh, with image on the side. The position of the image depends on what is the image. So if it is bigger, it will be maybe more centered or larger, and there will be less, less text around it. So you still need your floats, but to do what was done before in magazine, in newspaper, it is to have text uh, going around an image. Like this. This is an example where using floats in a modern layout is absolutely gorgeous, very nice. You float the elements, and you can, uh, in fact, exactly the same, define how you float an element inside DevTools. So here, with clip pass and shape outside, we can define shapes that can be circles, ellipses, rectangle, or here in the example, a polygon. And you see in your debugger that you have the different points of the polygon, and you can move them around and define where the text will appear. And that way, you don't have to compute with an analytical geometry exactly where will be the point or just by try and error. So that's very convenient, and you have the text. And also, of course, if you have a browser that doesn't support shapes, it's not a big deal. You will have a square. It will be less beautiful, but still usable. Ah, so the DevTools have a way to, de sorry, to define these shapes. So here we have um, the clip path where you can define with which area of the image uh, is visible to define where is the center. And uh, in this case here, you define what is the actual shape uh, that the text will take around it. Here again, a few links that you can use to have more information about this. So, until now, we have mostly reinvented something that were already existing. Grids are the old table, uh, flexbox uh, are a little bit new, but not really completely different. Shapes are modifying the way we do floats, but basically, it's only classic CSS. 
And in fact, there is a lot of other classic CSS that is being reinvented uh, lately. The first thing that is reinventing are fonts. So we, know all, we all know fonts from the HTML font element that we are burning uh, when we see it uh, in code nowadays, but just to the font uh, um, properties in CSS. We don't know the font. Uh, we display a font with a specific size. And if we want a different, slightly different font, we download a second font and uh, display it. So last year, variable font has been added to most browsers. And uh, it's a way to have personalized fonts that you download, but without the burden to download them six, seven, eight times, depending on the amount of variance you need. So variable fonts uh, are really a collection of fonts. And you can modify them in CSS without redownloading them by different attributes that are called axes. So you can modify their weight, their width, if they are in italic or slanted, the optical size. For a lot of these things, there is a high level properties, but we also have a low level properties. And in fact, here I have an example with two different weights, but it's the same font, and this font is downloaded only once, so you increase performance. So fonts are, in fact, Completely, made completely different right now. Uh, and again, in order to debug this, you need the corresponding dev tools. Oh, here is a font inspector that allow you to modify them and to see the difference uh, in real time. And what is uh, really interesting is this is also working for non-variable fonts, for system fonts, or for just regular static fonts that you download. Of course, uh, you will have less choices but you still can put them in italic and so on. So you can play with font and really adapt your font now uh, inside your design. Again, more information about fonts. It's, uh, it's a domain that is pretty new. So uh, even there are a few, um, um, most browsers already implement them, but there are a lot of things that may come in the future there. It depends on the desire of the developer, and what can be done. So that's, that's something that is only at the start. But the time when we have to de download a lot of fonts to do uh, a nice website uh, is soon over or more and more over. So all this, all this was a fancy stuff. There are even more boring stuff evolving. Gradients. So <coughs> gradients. Some people are using it. Some people say you don't have to use it. And some people say you must use them because they are so exciting. <laughs> I don't know if you know the last category. I'm torn between the different category. But clearly, there are interesting things going on with CSS and that can be done with CSS. But they also have uh, CSS gradients. But they also have drawbacks. So these are examples of gradients taken from MDN. Uh, that's why they are so bright. Uh, and next to each of them, there is a small code uh, explained. But I wanted here to remember, uh, to remind all of you that gradient is not just a boring gradient in the background. It can be something like sharp colors like this and sharp columns uh, where with a precise limit, it can be put over an image to give an effect. Uh, it can. Uh, go in diagonals, it can be repeated or not, and that can have a lot of effects. So that's, that's something to keep in mind when you do layouts. It is a tool that you can use. Uh, and the syntax of gradients has evolved. So two or three years ago, there was an addition of syntax to do uh, more, sorry, color, uh, color hints. And in fact, lately, and this landed Last Tuesday, in the version of last Tuesday, uh, people noticed that, uh, in fact, there is a lot of redundancy, a lot of things to type. So for example, you can, when you have several color hints, several stop, you can put it in one thing. So it doesn't change very much the life, but 
gradients are still something that you can use and you should consider use them sometimes. What is also interesting with gradients, this is not especially new, but you can put several gradients on the same box, on the same image. So here, these kind of effects are done by having three gradients in different direction with, of course, some transparency or else you have only one gradient visible. This leads to this kind of things that are quite interesting, that are quite impressive. I promise I will never put this one on a website because it's a bit too shiny, but it's interesting that it can lead to very two effects that can be uh, useful in some cases. It's gradients, so there is still a warning that it's computational heavy. Uh, it's getting better, but you have to pay attention when you have gradients. Sometimes an image is much more efficient because you just show the image and it doesn't have to compute, uh, especially on a mobile uh, website or the mobile version of a website. You don't want to drain the battery to have shiny gradients and an image can be more efficient. So you have to test, especially if you are using complex gradients, you have to check what impact it has on your performance. So I'm, I'm almost at the end. So it's 23 years now that uh, CSS has been invented for the first time. And modern layout has appeared. In fact, grid and flexible, flexible box are layouts that should have been there in the 90s, but weren't uh, for a lot of reasons. And the first one was that browser and computer were probably not powerful enough to have this implemented in a generic way in a browser. Traditional layouts are still here. They are now revisited with shapes, for example, for floats. So classical way of doing CSS leads to new effects. You, we have new techniques like variable fonts, and we have old techniques revisited like gradients. And all these now have a set of dev tools that can help the developer uh, debugging them and make them uh, really work in the browser. So the question, and I will not answer this one, is are we at the time where CSS is at maturity? And I just want to finish by just a few sentences, a few elements of what's coming in the future. So this is a trend that is still continuing nowadays. So we still have a few layers, like multiple columns, that can be used in some cases, like indexes or when you a shuffle cards of the screen, there's still some problems there and we need better tools for this. And this is on the way, maybe this year, maybe next year, we don't know yet, but it's interesting. Also, the, the first letter of a paragraph is something that we would like to, to have more control so that you know better and you can have better uh, design. Uh, there are a lot of other things going around uh, CSS and some are much more fancy with this, but I will see, we will all see what will come this year. Uh, but one thing that I'm really excited to see is uh, was something called subgrids that will be grids inside grids with connection and this is something missing and uh, we expect this this year. So thank you uh, for coming and uh, thank you for... Thank you so much, John. If, if there are questions, I can uh, try to, yeah. Can you help me pass the mic, please? Hi. Um, my question is, uh, do you know if there are any um, plans to release CSS gradients for text and, um, and also for borders? There are workarounds for it. And I'm using the workarounds right now, but uh, yeah, that's not YouTube proof, I think. So uh, for text, yeah. What do you what do you mean by text? So do you mean the alignments of CSS grids used inside blocks and regular blocks? That uh, the font color uh, is a gradient over a complete string. Okay. Yes. Uh, I've not seen any bug with this and work going on on this, so I guess that this is not in the current plan. That doesn't mean that uh, it shouldn't be the case. But it's interesting to check if there is a bug saying and asking for this and if it can go. But uh, yes, having a background image 
on several agreed elements and not on a box is something that is currently not possible on, on grid. Um, there are, I think it's not even in the spec right now. Okay, but you don't know if there are any no, plans uh, to... If it is not in the spec, it will not be in the browser. It has to be in the spec first. Okay. That's the first But there constraint. are no plans to put it in the as spec. As far as I know, I have not seen any plan around this. I have not checked what the, the W3C uh, uh, has around the spec. I, I know that this has been seen as something missing, but as far as I know, at least for this year, nothing will come uh, in a browser around this. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, about the uh, variable fonts. So, uh, two questions actually. Uh, one is just to check that what you mean by variable fonts is that, right, as, as of now, if I want to use bold, italics, and regular, uh, let's say from Google fonts, I have to download like those three font faces, right? And this would solve that, right? Yes. You just download one variant exactly. and then you customize as you will. The, the uh, font has to be designed to looks good with a different okay, axis. Okay, that was my but next yeah. question actually. How do you, do the fonts need to be authored in a special way or have a special format? Yes, it's a, it's a special this? format that describes, describes not only the glyphs for the regular font, but also how it should behave uh, when the axis are modified. I've not looked in the detail of the format, but it's actually a different format. Okay, so it means that if I, tomorrow I want to use that, or like six months from now, I have to check two things. One is browser support, and also that the font I'm using is also Absolutely. supporting this. Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, so since the beginning of CSS, uh, many features have been added to the we, 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 could, we could call it a markup language, uh, but the syntax itself didn't change much. In fact, uh, in most, most people require like um, pre-process before CSS, uh, like uh, SAS or LESS or whatever. Are there any plans to improve uh, the syntax of CSS? Uh, there, there are discussion, regularly discussion about this. So, uh, Small improvements, uh, like some feature uh, that can be in a preprocessor nowadays, could be added. Uh, we, we have uh, two examples. There, there is no an environment variable that allows to uh, connect. So this has been added by Apple recently and by Firefox in the last three days. So these kind of things are discussed and can be added. Having a completely revamped CSS with a different syntax I don't believe it uh, in the next few years. Maybe a new language at some point, but uh, there are so many, uh, yeah, so many things depending on the current syntax. What about just SAS? Some feature of SAS may go, uh, so the question was why about not just supporting SAS or why about supporting SAS? So some feature of SAS can go in, but surely not the whole of SAS. Um, kind of follow up. Answer and question is CSS variables new or old? <laughs> you say it, you are as old as me at least, so. <laughs> and more FOSDEM than me. <laughs> well, compared to the age of FOSDEM, CSS variables are new. And I think um, <clears throat> they're also something that addresses a lot of the preprocessor needs that people currently have, where you have like, where you want to centrally define a color and use it in a couple of places and yes. sizes that you want to use in a couple of places. Um, and that can now be all kind of put into a CSS variable and used. So there's actually no pre-processing necessary for that. So CSS variable was meant to address this. Uh, CSS variable has the problem is the fallback, if you are using CSS variable, the fallback is not very good. So basically you have to write your website twice, once with CSS variable and once without. And this really is an imp a problem for adoption. And I hope that the, this problem will go away very soon with all browsers supporting it and all browsers no more needed for, uh, to be supported by websites. But... Okay. Uh, do you need a mic? Yeah. Okay. 
something wrong with it or? Uh, no, everything's totally fine. Uh, just for the guy who was asking about uh, gradients for the text, there is actually a workaround uh, which is that you can clip the background uh, using background clip in CSS uh, to the text so the uh, background is like only for the text and then set the text to the transparent color which makes the text uh, be colored in the uh, gradient. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. He was like, he was like, give me the mic. I was like, why? Why do you want the mic? We still have time, so we do have time for one more question if you do have one. I'm sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Um, there was an extension to CSS called CSS Regions, which allows to connect boxes together and have fl text flow from one box into the next, making uh, CSS actually a markup program which uh, reaches the power of uh, desktop publishing uh, applications, uh, so very powerful layouts. Is there uh, still progress ma being made on this? So, uh, yes, um, uh, yes, there was CSS region uh, that has been proposed by Adobe, if I remember well, uh, a few years ago. Uh, I have not seen progress there, and the, the reason why progress stalled there is uh, because to uh, in, not implement it, but to render a page using CSS region, you had to, render, to calculate twice the pages. So the first time to have the basic layouts, and then you have to recalculate it a second time, which was making everything very slow and uh, uh, on the web. So uh, this is why there was no adoption, a lot of adoption around this pack. There is no adoption right now, but Nowadays, CSS is quicker and is more performant. So that may, this problem may go away or a workaround can be found around it. Putting CSS regions again as something possible. But no promise. <laughs> we do have it on tape now. But just <laughs> one last short, quick one. No? Thank you so much. Thank you.